Hey guys, it's week three of uh, our series called No Bummer Summer. So uh, I asked some questions on Facebook this week. Um, I asked if, uh, if anybody had ever uh, eaten sardines and uh, actually have some people that like sardines. So uh, one person said they were good with capers. I don't know what capers are, but anyway, supposedly those are good together. And um, also ask if uh, you'd ever played harmonica. Um, and a few people had tried it. I don't think anybody had mastered it, but a few people had tried it. I actually have my grandmother's harmonica. Uh, so it's a corner. Yeah. I've heard it's pretty nice. It's it's broke. It's got something that needs to be fixed, but uh, I don't know how to play it. But I do have it, so if anybody can teach me, that'd be good. <laughs> uh, uh, we uh, also asked the question if you'd ever had a, a self-portrait or one of those caricatures uh, drawn of you, and, and uh, we had one person that said they had had one, but uh, they couldn't find it. So I'd be interested to see that if anybody has those. You can, Send them to me on Facebook. Be interesting. Uh, I kind of tried to uh, make my own, uh, and uh, they turned out weird. You'll see the pictures on here. But anyway, uh, today we're talking about uh, things that you've never done and how we move those nevers to nows. Uh, those those things that we have the opportunity to move from never to now. So we're going to be reading. Um, about a man who had uh, been out fishing and never and never caught anything all night long, uh, but the next day uh, that turned into a now. He was a professional fisherman, and and uh, you know he ran into the situation. His his uh, this is from the book of Luke, and uh, Luke's a doctor. He also wrote the book of Acts, and uh, we're going to be reading from chapter five. So. Uh, he describes this story in detail in, in chapter 5. But before we read, I wanted to explain just a few uh, never now stories from my life. You know, uh, uh, most anybody that knows me knows I love music. And at, at, as far back as I can remember, even as a little kid, I, I loved music. So um, never thought that I would... Uh, and not saying the head all that I'm successful, but but never thought that I would experience uh, the success that I have. I've really enjoyed uh, I really enjoy playing and singing, and and uh, my dad always really loved music, and I guess that's where I got my love for it uh, uh, from. And uh, I remember uh, singing the very first time I sang at church. Uh, it was a song by Chris Christopherson called Why Me Lord. I don't know how old I was, but I was very young. And I remember being just scared to death before I got up there, but somehow I made it through it. And then the second time I can remember kind of having a solo was uh, in our Christmas program. Um, and I sang part of uh, Oh Holy Night. Um, I had part of the solo. Todd Ramage had the rest, rest of it. Um, another friend of mine but that was in sixth grade and uh, once again uh, I was scared to death uh, and then about 20 years ago I started helping out with music and youth group and then that turned into uh, helping with music at camps to uh, actually leading um, worship and stuff in camps and and retreats and all that kind of stuff and now uh, people actually pay me to sing which is just blows my mind so uh, so my never, uh, I never thought that could happen, turned into a, a now. Uh, also, uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about was being a speaker. You know, I, I never thought I'd be able to get up in front of people and speak. And uh, it scared me to death. And I remember being petrified even when I was in high school, you know, when it was time that you had to give some kind of oral report that uh, I didn't want to get up there. I didn't want to get in front of class. And... Uh, and I also very vividly remember the very first time I spoke at church, like on a Wednesday night. It was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was 1992. Uh, and I took three days off work to prepare 
to speak and was uh, scared to death. Everybody's going to find out I was stupid. And uh, But I wrote all this stuff down, uh, kind of adapted most of it from an article that I had read in a, in a Christianity Today uh, book or magazine. Uh, it was an article by Bill Hibbles. Uh, he was the founder of, uh, uh, well, lost me, a uh, church up in uh, Chicago, near Chicago. Anyway, um, and I don't think I looked up the whole 15 minutes. I just read verbatim what was on the page, and, and it was like short and sweet. But uh, but I did it, you know, and uh, made it through it. Uh, but my never became a now when God called me into the youth ministry. And so uh, now I get up and speak on a regular basis. And uh, I can't tell you that it doesn't make me nervous, but uh, it does uh, make me uh, a little, uh, it depends on if it's a different situation. Different situations, I get nervous beforehand. So, um, but most of the time, just a normal Wednesday night youth group, uh, I don't get too nervous before I speak. So, so God call, uh, you know, called me into that and, and he turned my never into a now. So, uh, the last thing uh, situation I wanted to kind of tell you about and give you examples. I remember uh, about 15 years ago trying to get in shape and um, I, I was having quite a bit of health problems and I was on all kinds of medicine and and so I started walking laps up at the old Reeland High School uh, on the track behind around the football field and one of my uh, friends came up there, a guy I went to high school with, he's actually older than me, came up there and he was running 100 yard sprints up and down uh, the football field, you know, from end zone to end zone. And so I thought, I wonder if I could do that. And, and, uh, I waited till everybody left. There was nobody around, you know, it was almost dark. So you couldn't even hardly see me. And, and, uh, like I said, I'd just been walking laps. And, and so I took off and tried to run from end zone that hundred yards to the other end zone. And, uh, I thought I was going to die. And when I got to the other end, I thought, this is stupid. Why would anybody ever want to do something like this? Uh, uh, <laughs> but the next day that I went out and walked, I, I uh, tried it again. And then uh, it got to where I was doing that uh, a couple times when I'd go walk. And that turned into running a half lap and then... Then I would run a lap every four laps, and and pretty soon it got to be where I would run, could run, you know, every other lap, and then I was running every lap. And I remember the very first day I thought I'm going to run a. I remember the day that I was going to run a mile for the first time. I remember leaving my house, and I knew exactly how far it was uh, a mile, and uh, so I ran that mile. Uh, it's around my neighborhood and up to a stop sign and turn around and come back and I didn't think there was any way the very last part of it's coming up a hill to my house and I thought there's no way I'm going to make this I'm going to die before it happens but I did and uh, so that turned into running two miles and then three miles and you know 5k is 3.1 miles and and uh, I'm a little OCD and so I decided that I was going to run uh, uh, one year I decided I was going to run a 5k which is 3.1 miles every day for a year and I did that I, I didn't miss a single day rain snow I remember running in some really bad weather conditions and sometimes I just uh, came down to, to church and ran laps around the gym but I, I got my 5k a day for 365 days and then uh, I decided my next goal was that I wanted to run a half marathon. So uh, I <laughs> trained for that and ended up having a knee injury and then finally uh, rehabbed from all that kind of that stuff and uh, finally ran my first half marathon in 2017. 13.1 uh, miles, I ran the whole thing. Um, I never thought I could do that, but uh, with God's help, uh, and uh, a lot of focus and a lot of work uh, I did it and uh, I, I was in a lot better shape there for a while I kind of got out of it um, now and, and uh, because I've, I've hurt my knee again and uh, but 
uh, I made an announcement to the youth on Wednesday night that I'm going to run another one. Uh, it's probably not going to be this year, but I went to the gym uh, this week and I ran, I ran uh, a mile and a half. I would walk a half mile and run a half mile and walk a half mile and run a half mile. So I did that for uh, six different sections there, which made up that uh, mile and a half that I actually run. And it wasn't fast. It's pretty slow. But, but uh, uh, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it going. And maybe by the time I turn, I was 50 when I ran my last one. I, maybe when I'm 55, I'll run another one. So um, anyway, what about you? You know, um, like I said, I asked those questions over the last couple of days. But what what serious things do you think about and tell yourself, I'll never be able to do that. You know, that's never going to happen for me. Um, what are those things? Well, let's look at this story from Luke. Uh, this is, like I said, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It says, One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in uh, uh, their partners in the other boat and soon both the boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking huh. so Simon is this professional fisherman and and uh, he worked with these great big nets they threw them out they tossed them out in the water and then they pulled them back in as they, and as they pulled them back in the fish were caught up in the nets and uh, that's how they made a living and that's how they you know provided food for people to eat and so Simon and his crew had worked hard all night the night before and they not caught any fish and so they had stopped and they'd they'd parked their boats there on the side of the water and they were cleaning their nets they were going to get ready for the next night and uh, uh you know simon respected jesus and and uh, he got his co-workers together and they let the nets down in the deep water just because jesus told them to uh, even though they had done the same exact thing the night before and never caught any fish uh, but this time, you know, there was uh, this miraculous catch. Uh, it was so big that they had to get help from another boat just to get it in. And, and uh, so that day, Simon's never, uh, from the day before, became a now. What are, what are uh, some of your nevers um, today? Uh, think about that. Uh, what have, have you thought could never happen in your life? I'm living proof uh, that God can take nevers and turn them into nows. Uh, he can take nothing and turn it into something. Uh, I used to be so bad at music that uh, I remember uh, a person singing with me that just kind of ducked off a stage in the middle of a song because uh, they didn't even want to be seen with me. And uh, I, like I said, I remember being so scared before I'd get up in front of a group of people to speak. And at one point in my life, before I started walking, uh, I couldn't walk probably a hundred yards without stopping to take take a breather and uh, take a rest. But God changed all that. So whatever it is in your life that needs to change, with God's help and His direction, He can change that in your life also. And don't uh, twist what I'm saying here, because uh, you know some people tell you that you just name it and claim it, and that's not what I'm saying at all. Um, just because you want to fly like a bird doesn't mean you just pray and go jump off a cliff uh, that's not how it works um, but if we'll seek God and we'll seek his will for our lives uh, he'll be faithful and he'll give us the strength to do whatever uh, we need to do and that uh, gets what he wants out of us and gets us uh, uh, he, what he wants to do through us uh, but we got to be willing to listen to what he wants to do in our lives and, and follow that direction for our future and, and then uh, the crazy thing is you will accomplish things. You'll have strength to, to do things in your lives beyond uh, your wildest dream. Uh, I've said that uh, a bunch with, with how where God 
where I was and where God's brought me, I, nothing at this point would surprise me. You know, if God said, you know, hey, I need you to go run for president or something, then please don't say that, God. But, uh, you know, I, okay. You know, because he would, he, it was that big a hurdle uh, going into the youth ministry. It was that big a hurdle getting up on stage and, and singing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I know that God will give me, if he told me to do that, he would give me that strength that I need to, to do those uh, things are just way out of my imagination. So uh, nothing <laughs> whatsoever would surprise me uh, at this point. So. I've had people ask me even recently, you know, if I'd ever thought about going in to the uh, to be a pastor. And I said, well, if you ever see me up there, you know, God drug me uh, kicking and screaming because that's uh, something that really scares me. And I definitely don't feel qualified to do so. Uh, and it, here's something else. Maybe maybe uh, you feel like uh, that people never have cared for you or never forgiven you for something that you've done wrong. Uh, maybe you feel that like God doesn't care or that God, uh, there's no way that he could forgive you, you know, that you could never be forgiven because you were so bad. That's not true. God loves you and, and he's for you and, and he's just, he uh, forgives you. He wants uh, you to forgive yourself and he wants you to, to leave the past behind and move on forward towards the future. Um, uh, and realize that you are his child and you're forgiven and loved. So uh, spend some time reading and studying about how much God loves you. If you're struggling with that, uh, there's lots uh, that you can read um, to get to know how God feels about you. And just what Jesus went through because he loves you so much to pay for your sins and rescue you forever. What if... Your summer adventure involved you trying something that you've never done before. Have you ever read all the way through the Gospels, uh, the first four books of the New Testament? Um, they tell the story of Jesus. Have you never done that? It can become a now. Uh, did you know that if you just committed to 15 minutes a day, uh, that you could read all four Gospels in about four weeks? Uh, and... Uh, did you know uh, that you could turn that never into a now uh, if you're willing to work for it? And there's a there's a U version Bible app, um, and there's some great reading plans in there if you're interested. And you can actually do those with your friends. Um, I started one yesterday, uh, and it's reading through the gospel. It's a, a 90 day thing. It's got. Uh, uh, daily readings it's got devotionals and like video overviews and and uh, you're welcome to look me up on there and and uh, join me with it you can actually send messages i think back and forth and kind of discuss what you've read and all that kind of stuff so uh, last week uh, we were to go on a secret mission uh, maybe you never did that now's a good time to turn that never into a now uh, come up with a plan put it into action uh, Imagine if this week one of those uh, more significant nevers in your life turned into a now. How would how would that change your life? How different would your life be? Uh, what might you uh, consider as possible uh, once that you know that a never is not forever? A never is not forever. What in your life do I need to consider? as possible with Jesus' help. What never are you going to turn into a now? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your strength and for your guidance. Lord, I pray that you will help us to see uh, the steps that we need to take to change our nevers to nows. Uh, you'll give us uh, uh, direction, clear guidance, and that we can trust you in that. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks. I'll see you uh, for week four.